I believe that camera technology has peaked. It's come a very long way since the early 1800s, but today I really can't think of what the modern cameras are lacking that is holding photographers back. Today almost anyone can take a properly exposed, sharp and in focus picture. And yet many people are longing for the old days where the photographs were grainy and greedy and out of focus, blurry, imperfect in so many ways. Why? Why is that? We've gotten to a point where I believe that cameras are just too good, too realistic. They capture too much detail, leaving very little room for creativity. You see, photography as an art is about capturing the essence of an object, a subject, a place, a feeling. But what we see and what the camera sees are two totally different things. In this beautiful Norwegian forest, my eyes are capable of taking in a lot of details, but only some things really catch my attention. Maybe some specific colors, some specific shapes. And that is my brain interpreting the data, the raw data that is getting from the eyes. As impressive as the human eyes are, all of that data is totally useless without a meaning. And that is exactly what cameras are. They are able to capture a lot of details, a lot of raw data from a landscape, from a subject, from an object, but it needs a photographer to make something meaningful out of that. Because the camera has no idea about what is important, about what's not important, you, the photographer, are the brain and the heart of the whole operation. Your task is to capture what you saw, what you felt, to capture the essence of what you are trying to photograph. Take for example this image that I made just five minutes ago. It is uh, almost a winter here in Norway. The, fa the fall is pretty much over. There are all, a lot of leaves on the ground, but some of them still hang onto the uh, branches and that's what I was trying to capture the end of the fall, the beginning of the winter and how life still hangs on. I found these two leaves still on the branch, still on the tree and I placed a naked tree without the leaves already in the background, slightly out of focus to contrast both things. This is something that we would usually not see if we're just walking by really quick we can only see those things if we slow down and pay attention but once you see the, the the leaf or the leaves on the branch of the tree you cannot unsee them and your brain is totally focused on that the camera in the other on the other hand is seeing everything in the scene the camera doesn't know that the leaf is the part that you are trying to, that you are seeing is the part that you are trying to capture so of course we have to tell it that that is what we want to do. In this case, I used a shallow depth of field. I focused, of course, on the leaf, making it the more uh, dominant object, the more dominant uh, element in the frame. But I also used uh, black and white instead of color. I added a lot of grain and it's a very high contrast image. Those are things that are not highly desirable if I was trying to uh, capture to uh, record that scene as accurately as possible. And some of these are actual technical limitations that photographers and engineers had been working very hard for the last few decades to get rid of. All of those limitations are actually desirable when it comes to making art. Why? Because making an imperfect image means to make it yours to to make it to uh, to give it a soul to give it some character that's why i like to add so many layers of abstraction like black and white grain high contrast low exposures maybe even motion blur and shooting at night on foggy days in a snowstorm whatever it is so i can decouple myself from reality and tr i can manipulate that and make it my own representation of that place, of that subject. The, I want it to, to look the way I see it, the way I perceive it, and not the objective way that everyone else is seeing it, and the way that the camera is seeing it. Also, an image shouldn't reveal all the answers. In fact, I believe that it should pose, it should ask new questions. 
it should be a little bit mysterious, leaving room for the uh, viewer's imagination and for your own imagination. Maybe a, a few years down the road, when you look at those images again, you might see something totally different because you've changed. You are different. You are not the same as the person who took that photograph, but you still left that room there to, to make your, your own perspective and your uh, own point of view matter in that piece of art. Anyway, this was just a quick thought, and I guess the TLDR version is to not just embrace the imperfections that your camera gear creates in your images, but actually adopt even more, add more layers of, of abstraction between the objective reality of the world and what you see how you capture that with your camera. Don't worry about what f-stop is going to capture the most detail and is going to make for the sharpest image. Don't worry about which ISO value uh, works better or not. Just focus on the essence, on what you are trying to say with your image and make it yours, uniquely yours. And now it's time for me to keep exploring this forest. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.